Good afternoon, and welcome to my first. How's this? Well, it's a weekend chat. That's when the casual are tired, but it's my usual daily broadcast. <laughs> um, episode number seven fifty eight, and the topic today is talking about the elephant in the room, which I've talked about all week. So I'm just going to give it another name and another focus. And the second part is how much do you depend on others? Because I want to speak to what's codependency, which is the elephant, and what's not codependency, because there are some things that you can depend upon others it's not healthy and some ways are healthy so i'm going to give you a bit of a a range a spectrum to consider should we say before i jump into that let me introduce myself to who i am who i am and what i do and why i do these talks um, my name is barry selby in case you hadn't already figured that out from the broadcast title um, i am a uh, inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert i'm also a best-selling author or i should say i'm author of the best-selling book i keep doing that and my best selling my books are best sellers, put it that way. <laughs> Called Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a book I teach from and I also help my clients with, which is Fifty Principles to Healthy Relationships for Men and Women. Again, Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover is the title. I'll put a link in the comments at the back end so you can check it out. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I work so much with women and I love supporting women and having what they want in their ideal in their relationships and in their lives as well. And this is what started these talks over two and a half years ago now almost two and a half years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 758, as I mentioned, and the topic today is talking about the elephant in the room, which is kind of the, well, I'll talk about that in a moment, and also um, how much you depend upon other people and which is good and which is bad, or which is good and which is less good. I don't want to say bad necessarily. So first of all, the elephant in the room that I've talked about a few times this week, <laughs> pretty much every day this past week, is about codependency, which I am passionate about um, I want to say destroying it's not the right word but I'm passionate about helping people see where it's not working for them which is why I talk about this as a spectrum of choices so today I'm going to speak more to the idea about when you depend upon other people and when it's maybe not so advisable to depend upon other people now codependency primarily is looked upon as being a toxic arrangement between two people in a relationship primarily and clinically speaking, I talked about this yesterday, um, there are like several traits of codependency, which was the savior, my, savior complex, the hero, and the enabler, were three of the different things they talked about. But I'm gonna speak, speak to it now in more, more less clinical, more casual, more human experience level type stuff, so you maybe get some reference from this. First of all, in relationship, as I, talk, I had this conversation yesterday, with, um, was at dinner party last night, and this conversation came up big time because I was invited to talk about it and it's been on my mind a lot recently, that codependency is one of the most um, destructive, undermining things in romantic relationships. And I'm gonna to speak to the piece where it's also a destructive thing in other relationships too, but we'll start with the primary with romantic ones because some people, not everybody, but some people enter a relationship, and I would say probably the majority of people do this, just thinking about that. The majority of people enter into relationships in a codependent way of being, meaning that they're looking to either provide or to receive levels of, um, what's the word I'm gonna use? I'm trying to be nice, so bear with me as I, as I paraphrase my language to be more d discreet and polite since I can be public about this. In my, in my private conversations, it can be more blunt. People go into relationships codependently, looking to have someone who's gonna take care of them more than is really fair. That's the polite way of saying it. Bottom line, what I'm actually trying to say is <laughs> that a lot of people go into relationships expecting to be lazy. That's another way, that's a polite way of saying it too. But that's really what's going on, is that people enter a relationship to be taken care of by their partner. And if they both do that, that isn't gonna work, obviously. But the challenge is when you're in a relationship and you're the person who's the caregiver, the caretaker, the one providing all the support, the other person, it's gonna feel very lopsided. And you won't particularly feel loved and respected. That's the surface level. Codependency goes deeper than that because codependency in its, in its clinical description is more about archetypes and about the paradigm of being in a relationship where you are actually being there um, in a very, again, trying to remember to play this out and say it the right way. It's interesting because I've talked about this now for six days, seven days, since last Sunday. So it's been an ongoing conversation in my talks and again last night at the dinner party that I'm finding new way to say things. So let me just rewind a bit and start another perspective. Codependency 
the elephant in the room, as I called it. And by the way, that was actually the title of the email sent to my list this morning. So if you're on my email list, you would have seen that in the title. So if you haven't read it yet, read it, because I do put some information in about this topic. Codependency is a way that we have been trained to live life by the culture we live in. So every relationship, generally speaking, has um, flavors or um, components of it that are codependent. We go to teachers and guides and lean on their wisdom, and sometimes we don't do anything with it. See, the thing about it is, for example, if you're going to go see a teacher or a guide or a speaker or a coach or somebody else, spiritual leader since tomorrow's Sunday, some people go there to have the person who's in front make them feel better, make them feel better. You know, it's the languaging there. Not inspire them to feel better, but to make them feel better. And when they leave that conversation, that session, that meeting, the feelings of being lifted up dissipate very quickly. That's an indication of codependence. Because somebody who goes to a teacher, a guide, a coach, who leaves that session inspired, awakened, and then activating things in their own lives and doing something, that's not codependence. That's actually interdependence. Yeah, dude, I'm just watching the, yeah. And the truth is when somebody takes value from what they've learned and uses it, uses it as key, to uplift their own life on their own, that's healthy. But a lot of people don't do that. And just to out some people, I'm not gonna say any names though, people go to my, the spiritual center I go to, I go to a spiritual center on Sundays, as a lot of people do, and when I go to, there's a lot of people attending. But I watch some people who come to the service on Sundays feeling lifted up when they get to the service, going through the service, loving the music, the teaching, the message, everything else, and the prayers. But when they leave the service, Sometimes before they've even left the building, they're already back in their harumph, upset, grrr type energy. That was that was more phonetic than languaging. But they're not carrying, like, you know, when they're driving their cars, that's, that's one of the biggest things I, I watch that. People get in the cars and don't drive like they act in the service. You know the sort of people? This is one of the things about codependence is that it's a thing that doesn't, it's, codependency is, is, is almost like um, having to be supported constantly like being able to be self-sufficient is impossible. And in some relationships, to get back to the romantic piece again, codependency is an indication, or should codependency is indicated by a constant need to be supported. Now, you may go through periods when you want to be supported, just to go back to the clean side of things, again, the spectrum I'm talking about, to be supported during a certain phase of your life. Maybe you, maybe you need some help because you're, you're launching a new vision, new career, and you want to have some, some your partner support you financially. You're going, you're going through that. That's a workable thing when you both are on the same page. But you don't spend the next 30 years depending upon them that way. If you're going through some emotional trauma because a family member died or there's an accident or something else, and your partner supports you through that, that's wonderful. But it's not permanent. And this is the thing, is that some people tend to get into that state where they feel so supported they don't want to leave. They want to stay in that weakened state to be supported by the other person. They don't, know, they don't want to come back to autonomy and self-sufficiency anymore. And that is actually a trap. So codependency has its claws in more than just, claws, <laughs> just in visual, as I saw on camera, in more than just romantic relationships. This applies to all sorts of relationships, especially between student and teacher setups, whether it's a, um, a congregant and a, and, a minister, and a minister, talking about spiritual centers, whether it's a coach and a, cl a client and a coach, whether it's a student and a teacher, if it's academic or some other format, those relationships can be healthy or they can be codependent. And the challenge also is if those roles are adopted in a romantic relationship, especially they can be very codependent. And the recommendation is, is that if you are the person who is the, the leader in this conversation, the teacher, the minister, the coach, the guide, Make sure that you're working with your client, and I'm using that in a clinical sense, this sense, or your audience, in a way that they leave knowing how to do it themselves. If they're not willing to learn that, you may want to disassociate with them, like disconnect to say bye-bye. I actually have, have had clients that I don't work with anymore because they weren't taking what I was helping them with to heart. And much as I'd love getting paid, that's not healthy. And I don't feel good doing it. So, and I know people like that in this world who are teachers and leaders who know the same thing, that to be a truly effective guide means that your guide, guidees, <laughs> your guidees, your followers, your audience, your, your, your um, clients, take things to heart and use them and become self-empowered. 
that to me is effective. That's not codependence. I talked about interdependence being the opposite in a way of codependence. Interdependence means that we do benefit from each other, but we don't have to lean on each other all the time. We learn how to stand on two feet. We are actually independent. We're whole beings. We can do whatever we want. I know I'm flip-flopping between romantic and other relationships, but the thing about this this um, um, dependency piece is it applies in so many different relationships. And it, usually for somebody who's going through this, they may exhibit it in many relationships, not just one. So it may not be the romantic relationship only, it might be the family dynamic. And that, oh, here we go. <laughs> for a lot of people, the codependency training happened in family dynamics. And they may have to deal with the fact that they are in, in a very dependent relationship with their parents or vice versa, because sometimes as adults, when you have elderly parents, they become codependent upon you. It's like, how do you take care of that? Because there is a, this is a, one of the challenges in family relationships, just to change gears completely, where it almost feels like if you don't do what they need and be um, enmeshed in codependency, that somehow you're betraying them or that you don't love them anymore. And that's not true. Taking care of somebody, especially if they're unable to, and I mean unable, not, not willing to be able, different. Unable to is something that can be challenging. But if it's somebody who you know is just choosing to be unable, who's not willing to be able themselves, then maybe it's time to have a, have a um, <laughs> come to Jesus conversation, a heart to heart conversation of the truth. Because sometimes I see, in fact, I know people like this who are not free to live their own lives because of the enmeshment of a parent, a sibling, and an ex relationship where they're still enmeshed in a codependent format. That's not pretty, it's not fun, it's not healthy. So, the message I want to really give here, as a, I'm trying to think about bringing this all together romantic, teacher, family dynamics, all three of those. In the codependent paradigm, nobody wins. The other person may think they're winning because they're getting from stuff from you, but they're actually sort of feeding in an endless way, but they're not keeping it. The only way people win is when the person imparts a sense of autonomy, independence, learning to the other person, where they get to live on their own, stand on their own two feet, live fully independent. Again, interdependency is a healthy way for a relationship to be a romantic relationship to work, any relationship to work, frankly, where you know you are autonomous, you're healthy, you're whole, and you're functional as a full being, and then the other person provides things just that are on top of that, the gravy, the, the overflow, so to speak. But it's it sounds it, it's 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 not easy. I know. I spent many times in codependent relationships. I shared yesterday. If you didn't hear this broadcast, I shared a story about something that happened years ago. I forgot about completely. That really spoke to the idea about being um, in the the hero savior role. Um, that talk I recommend watching because I talked about some things that are definitively in the um, codependency clinical description but it makes sense about how it happens in real relationships so this is this is like a lighter version of that um i think that's about it for now i'm just thinking there's anything else on this one well i haven't seen any questions so i think i've got anything oh by the way if this is a facebook live that i'm doing by the way by the way by the way this is a facebook live i'm doing if you haven't seen my broadcast before i do invite people to interact when they're online and if they're not they can always re respond or comment or question afterwards so I will invite, if you have questions, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, this, this is Facebook Live I do every day. So it's 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author. Please like my page. And also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. You can subscribe to that channel as well. All my social media is my name, Barry Selby. Easy, easy to find me that way. Um, and there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. I was gonna say every every social media platform. Instagram, right now, I'm, I've been blocked on, so I've gotta get that cleaned up. That's on my list of things to get fixed. If you know any connections at, at Instagram, please let me know, because I got kicked out seven, eight months ago now. Somebody somebody accused me of impersonating them. That's an interesting conversation. But I'm learning, I'm learning detachment, <laughs> to say the least. So anyway, so this is a topic I've talked about basically the whole week. So if you haven't seen my broadcast this week, I recommend going back and look, in, look at what's the last seven solo. This is what, 578? So go back and look, look at all, all my 570s broadcasts. I recommend looking at those. Excuse me, seven. No, wrong way around. 750s. <laughs> this is 757. 758? 758. So the 750s, that was right. I had the wrong numbers there. 570. That's 200 broadcasts. I just wiped out of my head. 
please go back and watch those if you want to find more about codependency and maybe where you're suffering from it or you're practicing it or you're breaking free of it. And if you have a challenge with it, reach out to me. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for my book, as I remember said at the beginning, and also I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me. Uh, sorry, a complimentary clarity conversation, because it's not about discovery, because you already know who you are. It's a clarity conversation, so I can help you get some more clarity where you want to go. I think that's about it. I appreciate you being with me as always. This is one of my daily chats. Back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I hope it's been of use to you. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, as I said. And uh, take care of yourself. No more elephants. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.